So I found this cool textured bottle and all I could think of was the design on it kind of looked like the back of a turtle. So I thought I would try to make some turtles out of it. I broke it up just to get it started. I, I really didn't want it to smash into a bunch of pieces. And then I used my nipper tool to cut out some turtle backs. I don't know, they're not actually round, maybe they're kind of oval. And I think I drew some on there so that I could kind of follow a pattern that didn't always work out the right way. As you know, glass doesn't always break the way you want it to. But I went ahead and I believe I got seven turtle backs out of it and I still have a little bit more of the glass left. So I'm gonna let this one go a little bit slower so that you can see how I'm doing it. So there are a lot, lot of other ways to make a turtle. You don't have to find this <laughs> this type of glass because I'm thinking this is a one-of-a-kind bottle. I looked on Amazon and all over trying to find out where this bottle came from. You know, if it was like an oil bottle or what. And um, so, like I said, there are other ways to make turtles. You could use stained glass. You could use uh, tumbled glass and put many pieces together to make it. And I actually do have a turtle up on my wall that I put on a round mirror that I made out of tumbled glass. So next I actually took these out and kind of sanded them down a little bit, smoothed them down. And um, this glass could actually be uh, tumbled, you know, lightly to get just to get the uh, sharp edges off if you wanted to. But I just chose to do it this way. And then after I washed and dried them, I took some stained glass, Krylon stained glass spray paint and sprayed them. And the reason I didn't use the Tamiya, Tamiya, I guess it's pronounced, is because it's more of a blue green. The Krylon is more of a true green. Next, I started cleaning out my mold using my painter's tape. I think that's the best way to get residue and everything out of it without using your fingernail and scratching it. And then what I did next was used a mold release spray. I started using that after I had one stick. Some people are saying that after you're done using your mold, you should spray it with the mold release spray and store it that way. And that helps preserve the mold. It keeps it soft and keeps it from drying out. So the next thing I did was mix some sand with resin. And if you remember from my last video, I put the sand in first, the resin on top of it, and had a difficult time stirring it. This time I put the resin in the bottom of the cup, some resin, and then put the sand on top of it and then added a little more resin as needed. After it was all mixed up, this is the consistency you want, I went ahead and I spread it at the bottom part of the mold. Then poured the remaining resin in just so that I didn't waste it. I used the kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles and then I put some shells on it. And then I let this set overnight. Now the resin I'm using for this project is uh, Jade Diction 4 Hour Demold 24 Hour Cure. So I could have done something with it sooner, but I just let it set overnight. So I mixed up some more resin the next day. I poured a little bit of it in a separate smaller cup and then I mixed some blue mica powder. It's kind of a blue green mica powder into it. I did not want it opaque. I wanted it um, translucent. So I mixed this in and just so that you know, this resin actually sat for about 15 minutes before I even put the mica powder in. I wanted it to kind of thicken up. I think it this works better as far as the waves when it's a little bit thicker. And um, this uh, resin, which is the J-Diction 4-Hour Demold 24-Hour Cure, is a more viscous resin. And I think the more viscous resins create more bubbles and you're better off letting them sit for a while. As the resin is sitting, the bubbles will rise to the top and dissipate. So this white pigment that I'm putting in is more like an alcohol ink, not so much like a um, paste. A lot of people will use paste for this. And I went ahead and mixed that in to the smaller cup. And then I poured the uh, blue resin in and what I did was I drew up the white resin with a syringe. I feel like I have more control over 
the, uh, the line that I create when I have it in a syringe. So I went ahead and drew a line across the bottom, a fairly thin one. At the one end, it's a little bit thinner, so I went back over it with some of the white resin. And then I took, I did not take my torch and heat heat it up at all. I just took my heat gun on high setting as far as high, as far as the amount of air that's coming out of it, but the heat at the very lowest setting and I just blew it across. I think I went back and forth one time. And then I took my kitchen torch after I was done with that. And I just went over the whole thing to get rid of bubbles and to heat up the white area because they say that's what creates cells. So this sat overnight again. And the next day I went and I mixed more resin up put some of the resin in a smaller cup, mix the white pigment in, and also mixed another color blue into the larger cup of resin. This is, a, again, a mica powder. And um, this resin sat for about 15 minutes after I had mixed it before I added the color additives to it. Then I went ahead and I poured it over and I drew up the white resin with a syringe again and drew a line across it. And then I took my heat gun and went back and forth one time. And I thought it needed a little bit more white, so I put some white again across. And then I went over it with the kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles and to hopefully create cells and this sat overnight. <laughs> Day three, the same thing. Mixed up some more resin, put it in two separate cups. This is a little darker blue. Mixed up the white pigment, drew it up in a syringe. Then I poured the blue resin over the top, made a white line across it, Use the heat gun one more time at a low heat setting, but a high air setting and blew over it back and forth one time. Then use the kitchen door torch one last time and let this set overnight. So next I decided I was going to paint the back side of the turtle because this is translucent and it is going on a darker background so it could, um, you will be able to see through it and you don't want to be able to see the beach and the waves through it. So I'm going to paint the back of it and the way I'm choosing to paint the back of it with is with UV resin. So I poured some high viscosity J Diction UV resin into the little cup. You only need a little bit. And then I'm using two different types or two different mica powder colors, both the same. Um, I think it's called About ABUT. I will link everything I use in the description. And I just mixed that up real good. And I took my resin spreader and I painted the back of the turtle with it. Now you can use any kind, you can use a paintbrush, you can use your finger. It just happened to be what I had sitting there and I just used the little resin spreader and painted the back with it. This way the turtle will be opaque. You can put the resin on top of it and you won't be able to see what's underneath it. So next I put it under the UV light and I have this little J Diction UV light <laughs> and I did end up getting another one, but um, I haven't taken it out of the box yet. <laughs> I have so much stuff in my craft room. I don't know whether I'm coming or going sometimes, but um, this little J Diction light, there are stronger ones, which uh, many people have suggested and I did get a stronger one. I, like I said, I just haven't taken it out of the box yet. So I put it under this UV light for several minutes and then it was done.
Next, I start assembling the turtle, but I wanted to point out the wave first. So for that very third wave, I used too much of the blue resin. I should have used about half that amount. Then the wave, the third wave would have settled up a little bit higher, but nothing I can do about it now. So I started assembling the turtle. And again, the um, you saw it was a bottle that I broke up for the back and the um, the rest of the turtle is made from faux sea glass. This is glass I've picked up at garage sales and thrift stores, tum broken up and tumbled in my tumbler. And here I had picked out a bunch of pieces that I thought that would work, and I do end up having to nip a few of them to make them fit better against the turtle's body. The resin I'm using for this project is J. Diction 24-Hour Cure 4-Hour Demold Resin. And I really like this resin for molds and glass on glass, but it is not good for canvas. It does have a tendency to cause fish eyes. So, and it is also a very fast setting resin, so it's a little bit more difficult to work with. So I do end up taking the turtle off before I pour the resin. The resin is one to one ratio resin that you mix slowly in a cup for three to five minutes. The thicker resins I find have more of a tendency to create bubbles. So I did let this sit for 15 minutes before I poured it on the project and I just poured it on the top half of the project. And look at this stick, this resin spreading stick. This is um, UV resin that I had set on it, and you can just pop it off. That's what's so great about these silicone spreading sticks. Anyway, um, the, so the reason I took the turtle off and didn't pour the resin over the turtle is for a couple of reasons. One, um, glass that has texture on it, when you pour resin over it, the texture has a tendency to disappear. Also, the sea glass, when you have it on something that's darker than it, below it, if you pour resin on it, it becomes more transparent and you can see what's underneath it. So that's why I chose to do it this way. And here I have a second one that I had done also. The uh, waves are a little bit further apart on this. And this one I do the exact same way as the first one. Now when making waves with this fast setting resin, you don't have to wait as long between waves. You could probably wait. It's actually to be able to demold after four hours, although I've found that it does take longer. Um, if you wait probably three hours, you can make your next wave. Hey everyone, so I actually ended up making three of these turtles and um, the reason being the first one I made has, um, I did not put any UV resin on the back so it's transparent and you can see through to the beach in the water, which I didn't really like that. I mean it still looks pretty but um, I, I wanted it to be opaque. So that's why I took the UV resin with the mica powder and painted it. And um, I don't know if you can see that. And so you can't uh, see through it. And then the other thing I did different with these is, so on this one, I poured the resin on top and um, the textured glass is more difficult to see. So when using textured glass, someone was asking on the Facebook page about, um, you know, what do you do? Is it better to pour the resin on the canvas or your substrate first, or should you uh, put it just on top of the glass? And it just depends uh, uh, for a bunch of different reasons. But this is one reason why, I mean, you can always put resin on your project and then still put it on top of the glass after that. But this is one reason why you wouldn't want to put it on top of the glass is because when you're using um, glass that has a texture like this, uh, if you put resin over it, the texture will be less visible. And that's what I did with this. There's resin on top of it. And you can still see the texture a little bit, but it is less visible. And I'll show you another project right here that I did 
uh, before where I totally messed up and poured resin over it right here. This is the textured glass I used for the tree on my Bluebird project. And here it is um, with the resin over it. And you can see how you can't even see the texture at all. It's very difficult to see. So anyway, um, <laughs> So if you're using textured glass, it's in your best interest, or if you want it to be more visible, the texture, don't pour resin over it. So I still have a lot to learn with my, um, with my uh, waves here, but for some reason on this, the waves are not as visible. I'm gonna show it to you what, with them laying down right here. Here I'm just showing you the waves in, from this view because when I'm holding it up, you can't really see the waves. It looks like one big mishmash all together, all white. But here you can see the waves a little better and you can see the texture on the first two turtles is more visible than on the very last one. So, and then this is the very last one, the one that I poured resin over. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we have our Facebook page going now. If you're interested in that, there's lots of people who've been doing resin and glass art for years, longer than me. There's a lot of people that are just beginners. It's a great place to ask questions. Some of the questions I can't even answer, I'm learning um, from people that are on the Facebook page. So it's great. Um, anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. If you enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe and you'll be notified every week when a video comes out. I usually upload a video on Friday. Sometimes I'll do two a week. And uh, I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.